The Minnesota Vikings offensive line absolutely dominated the Detroit Lions defensive line. Today we're going to break the tape down because guys like Christian Derrissaw, Ed Inger, and Brian O'Neill were absolutely dominating. And in my opinion, it's plays like this that ultimately allowed the Vikings to have success on the ground. Check this play out. This play here is a split zone to the left, so all these offensive linemen and tight end are going to block to the left. Number 30 here is going to come and wham the backside defensive end. Basically, Cook is going to find a lane here, and in this play, he's going to end up cutting it backside. Now, the block by the tight end here is the block that really sets this up. Both the tight end and Brian O'Neill are going to double, and O'Neill does a great job stretching this defensive end to the left here and really creating that gap right here for Dalvin Cook to hit. But the tight end does an even better job in my opinion. Number 82 is going to double team down and then get to the backside linebacker. But more than that, he's going to kick his butt to the inside and really create that lane. Really seal it off. This is a great job by the right tackle and tight end. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. I've said in the past that I think Christian Derrissaw is a top 10 left tackle. And it's because he's so fundamentally sound. Every single one of his pass sets almost look identical in terms of his technique. He gets out of his stance, he's calm, he's collective, he doesn't panic, nothing really phases him. First, the thing I like about this play is instead of just getting straight vertical, he's going to make sure that a pocket gets created for the quarterback. And not just a pocket, a wide pocket. He's actually going to take two steps to his left to close the gap between him and the defensive end. And this is something that NFL coaches have been having their offensive linemen do. Because ultimately that creates more room for the quarterback. Derisaw closes the gap. The defensive end is going to try to swat down Derisaw's hands. Derisaw is going to go ahead and just readjust and punch the defensive end and ultimately just shut him down. Derisaw is very good. He's very repetitive and sometimes that's good for a left tackle to be able to do that. Here's another rep. You're going to see Derisaw once again get out, punch, punch well, and just shut this defensive end down. That's a really nice job, man. Again, we're going to look at so many other reps of run blocking, other guys doing a good job. But I do want to give the credit to Darisol where it's deserved. He is the Vikings' best offensive lineman, and he is a top-tier left tackle. And I think more people need to start realizing what Darisol is. The Minnesota Vikings' offensive line does a great job in these inside zone plays. Here's a great example of that. Cook is going to pick up a massive number of yards, and it's really because he goes untouched for the first 7 to 8 yards. And this is really a good job by the tight end here. Number 86 to take Aiden Hutchinson and stretch him downwards. Ultimately, the inside zone is going to get bent back through that gap to the right of the tight end. But another player that deserves credit on this play is going to be KJ Osborne, who's going to do a great job getting to the inside of this guy right here and sealing him off. If you guys watch Osborne, he's going to get to the inside of the safety, gets his butt back towards the running back. How massive of a lane is this here? When the first guy that could potentially tackle you is 15 yards downfield, that's a great job, but even the offensive linemen do a really good job on this play. When you watch Ed Ingram double here with Brian O'Neill and watch him get to the second level to shut down the linebacker, this is what you want in an inside zone. The backside will always be open as long as one guy can properly reach and seal off. And in this play, it was Osborne. He's able to seal that backside defender off. So really nice job. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. How many times in a pass play do you see a pocket look like this? A pocket that's so clean the quarterback can take three steps forward to throw the ball. The Vikings this year have really done a great job on the offensive line. And of course, the investments from the front office is there and it's really paying off. Oftentimes, you don't see offensive line dominate the way the Vikings do. And the Vikings had a really good game, in my opinion, against the Lions. Now, one of the interesting things that people will say is they'll see plays like this, where at the end of this play, the quarterback gets pressured, right? At the end of it, the quarterback goes through all his reads, and he may take a, a hit, and they may say, well, that's on the offense line for getting the quarterback hit. But the thing with this play is the quarterback had time to go through his reads. The quarterback was kept clean. Derisaw shut down his guy, and from left guard to right tackle, as well as the running back that stayed in the block, guys shut down their guy. The offensive players are doing a good job on this play. It's really at the end of it, after Cousins is able to go through his reads, that he realized he's not able to actually get the ball out. Keep in mind, this was third and five. This wasn't a bad job by the offensive line. Again, I say this because I know when I say things like this offense line's very stout, it's very good, it's giving Kirk Cousins time. People will say, well, when I watch the broadcast angle, why is it that I see a guy hitting Kirk Cousins in the backfield? Why is it that Cousins is getting pressured? Right? This isn't true pressure. 
Cousins has time to throw this ball. He ends up not throwing it. This is a really nice job. Just wanted to point it out. Let's get into some running reps because I think that's where the Vikings really do a great job. I want you guys to watch the rookie Ed Ingram as well as the center. Watch them double team on this play with number 96 and watch as Ed Ingram gets to number 44. He's able to cut him off and the running back's able to pick up about 6 yards on this play. This is a difficult block for Ingram because as soon as these guys start coming to the left of your screen here, number 44 is going to shoot this gap. So Ingram understands he doesn't have a long time to really help the center who has to reach to the 2 eye technique defensive tackle. So as Ingram and the center quickly make contact, Ingram's going to quickly get off of him and get to number 44. Now one of the interesting things with this play is Ingram doesn't even really block number 44. Instead, he puts his body in the correct position. Ingram understands that if he's able to just get his body in position, and if 44 takes the underneath, that he won't be able to make the play on the running back. So Ingram puts his body in position. He ends up cutting off number 44. And the running back hits it quickly, and even though Ingram falls, he does just enough to cut off number 44. This play works because of him. That's a great job right there. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. I want you guys to watch left guard Ezra Cleveland on this play. Between him and Darisaw, they're going to do a great job double teaming number 54 and then Cleveland getting up to number 34. And because of those two guys, the running back's able to cut it right off of the outside of the tackle. And he picks up a nice chunk of yards. This is the bread and butter of that inside zone, right? You really want to be able to move people. Darisaw takes this defensive tackle, and look at how far he's going to stretch him out to the left of your screen. Look at this. He was about right here relative to the hash marks, and he took him at least 10 to 12 yards to the left. And Cook does a great job cutting it right off of that. But more so than that, you watch the backside seal by this tight end, number 86, on Aiden Hutchinson. He's going to do a great job. First and foremost, he's going to try to punch down Hutchinson's lock that he's going to do right there. There's the punch. He's not able to get there. He's going to just get those hands right on the backside of Hutchinson. He makes sure not to hold. He's going to end up letting him go. He's going to readjust those hands. And he's going to stick with Hutchinson. He's going to mirror him and put him down into the dirt. A really nice job by the entire offensive line. I want you guys to watch this pull here by Cleveland and watch as he gets out and he's going to end up hooking number 34 here who's basically going to read Cleveland pulling. He's going to end up making his way over here and the contact is going to happen right about here. Cleveland does a really nice job getting out there. As you guys can see, he gets to number 34. He locks in and this is a really nice counter play right here by the Minnesota Vikings. But more than that, I really want to point out how quickly Cleveland's able to get out of his stands. He actually ends up moving before the ball gets snapped. Maybe just a split second. This will never get called. As you guys can see, he's going to move. The ball barely gets snapped. You guys missed it. I watch it in slow motion. Cleveland once again gets out of his stance, gets out, gets going, and ends up making contact with 34. That's a really solid job. And it's a really nice play design. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. I want you guys to watch this pass set right here by Ed Ingram. This is a man-on-man -man blocking scheme by the offensive line, which means every single guy has to stick to their guy, even if a stunt is happening by the defense. As you guys see, defensive line is going to slant here to the inside, and the defensive tackle is going to try to come around on a stunt. This is a long-developing stunt, but because it's man-on-man, -man, you're going to see Ed Ingram get with number 94, lock in, and just mirror him the entire time here. It is a nice job chasing him and shutting him down, ultimately giving Kirk Cousins a clean pocket. He's able to deliver the pass. That's a great job right there. This is absolutely great awareness by Christian Darisaw. He's going to do a great job getting his hand to the inside and finding the one and only guy that can actually blow this play up. Finding him, making contact with him out in space, and basically allowing the tight end here to pick up a number of yards. That's a great job right there by Darisaw. Just want to point it out. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Now, of course, on this channel, one of the things that we like to do is show positive and negative plays. And on this play, rookie Ed Ingram is going to get beat by the defensive tackle here. You guys can check the play out. And I do want to break it down because I think this was a design throw. Uh, it was not a trick play, but it was more so a design play to get number 30 here out in space and to hit him. But the defense tackle does a great job on Ingram. Now, Ingram is going to jump set this because of the play action. And one of the things with a jump set is if you're jumping to the left here, you don't want to get too off balance. You don't want to allow the defense tackle 
as you're already leaning left to take your right shoulder and your momentum and snatch it downwards. And that's exactly what this defense lineman does. The D lineman uses his left hand, puts it on Ingram's right shoulder, pulls it down, as you guys can see right there, and swims over him. And ultimately, that leverage right there, Ingram loses, and Cousins kind of just throws the ball away. Not a major deal because it is teach tape. Of course, the offensive line coach will take this play, put it on the big screen, and tell Ingram why he messed up, how he messed up, and maybe what he may need to fix on this play. Just wanted to point it out. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. I want you guys to watch this seven yard run by Dalvin Cook and watch as he squeezes through the gap. You know, this is why offensive linemen, when you're running those zone plays, have to really stick to your guys. And really, you want to create as much movement as you possibly can. If the play is to the right, you want to try to stretch your guy as far as possible because ultimately by you stretching, one of these lanes will end up opening up. Rather, it's between the right guard, right tackle, between the center and right guard. A lane generally does open up. And on this play right here, you're going to see that as both the center and right guard make contact. And the center is going to get off of the guy that the right guard is going to stick to. And he's going to make contact with the linebacker. At the same time, the backside seal by Ezra Cleveland ultimately allows the running back to cut it. It's a small little gap, but Cook does just enough. The guard does just enough. The center does just enough. And ultimately, a play that should have probably not picked up any yards ends up picking up six to seven yards that's a great job by the offensive line is great vision by the running back i don't think there's any team that can design runs better than the minnesota vikings and it's not just the design of the run it's the fact that the offense runs really really good from left tackle to right tackle the investments have been made in these guys and it's paying off right when you're able to draft well and draft guys like Christian Dersaw, as opposed to maybe a guy like Tevin Jenkins, who remember a lot of people had as a top three or four offensive lineman, right? But when you're able to make the right pick, even Ed Ingram, some people criticize that pick. But these type of picks ultimately allow you to build a really good offensive line. And over time, you get plays like this, where guys just absolutely dominate and seal, and your running back's able to pick up so many yards without actually even making contact until he's like eight yards downfield. This is a great job by Derisov double teaming and then sealing off the linebacker as you're going to see right there. There it is. Good job right there between him and the left guard. And these are the type of plays that end up happening. You know, when I watch the Minnesota Vikings and I watch the offensive line, especially in preseason, you know, I did a lot of Ed Ingram tape. Uh, I did a, I did a Lewis Seen tape as well. Uh, but when I watch the offensive line, that's the tape that really gets me fired up because that's the unit that I think is going to carry this team. Justin Jefferson's a great wide receiver, a top three wide receiver. Everyone knows that factually. Adam Thielen has done so many great things. Kirk Cousins has done great things. But really, in my opinion, it's the offensive line that will carry this team. If the Minnesota Vikings run, 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 and throw off of the run, they're going to have so much success. Overall, I love where this offensive line is. Thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe. I will try to do at least one Vikings film breakdown every single week. Maybe next time it'll be Lewisine or one of the other rookies. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.